So there's this new Animal Crossing game coming out for the Switch later this year, or at least I hope it's this year. But just like you, I'm just sitting here eagerly awaiting for a direct, or any news, or anything. Well, whether Nintendo remembers to advertise it or not, it is apparently happening. And relatively recently, as I sat through one of Nintendo's directs and my eyes just glazed over as we reached minute 10 of Fire Emblem, I started thinking about this series and who the true villain is. No, I'm not talking about Mr. Rossetti or the bees or the weeds, but capitalism. I'm sorry, that's not who we're talking about? How okay, hang on. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, so. Tom Nook. Nook has more or less become the Scrooge McDuck of gaming, other than, you know, Scrooge McDuck. After all, no matter how many bells you seem to collect, no matter how much power you gain, each Animal Crossing game has you serving Tom Nook. Mayor be damned, go back to fishing for bells while you leave Isabel with all the actual work, you monster. But this leaves us with the question, in a series where the player can literally be the mayor of their town, how powerful does this Tanuki have to be for us to be constantly indebted to him? Just. How rich is Tom Nook? I'm Jacob with the leaderboard, and let's find out. I was mostly kidding when I said that Tom Nook was the villain of the series, but others would disagree. Tom Nook's been treated pretty harshly by fans, ranging from being seen as a swindler or con man. He's even been named among some of gaming's best villains in more than a few online listicles and even an alleged issue of Nintendo Power. But since Nintendo Power is kind of horribly archived on the internet, that last one's kind of hard to confirm, but Really? Even Nintendo thinks that Tom Nook is a bad guy? Granted, he is pretty money hungry and consistently takes all of your hard earned profits. And once you do pay off your debt, he just expands your house without your consent and then slaps you with more debt. So what's our approach here? Exactly how are we going to find out how much money runs through Animal Crossing? Well, we're mostly gonna be focusing on Tom Nook's profits through his real estate business, all the houses he builds for us dumb villagers. So we'll be focusing primarily on the four main games of the series since its worldwide release. The original Animal Crossing, which I'll refer to from now now on as population growing, Wild World, City Folk, and New Leaf. And while we may pull certain info from the side games like Amiibo Festival or Happy Home Designer, we won't be taking these games into account when trying to calculate Tom Nook's net worth. Another thing that we notably won't be focusing on is the stores that Nook operates. That might sound crazy since Nook frequently upgrades the stores and that certainly can't be for no cost. But here's the thing, Nook upgrading his stores isn't directly tied to how much money you're giving him. It's equally tied to how much money he gives you. It's less of a matter of whether or not he can afford to upgrade, but rather whether the economy is strong enough that he can provide us with more supply. All this to say, it shouldn't be directly tied to Tom Nook's wealth regarding his real estate business. And speaking of Tom Nook's real estate business, let's think about this. I'm an old man and I have very fond memories of playing Population Growing on my GameCube and going through an inordinate amount of hoops so that my character could visit my friend's town. Ah, oh, those were the good old days having friends. While this isn't straight up multiplayer, Animal Crossing has always been promoting at least this sort of pseudo multiplayer since day one. And this has some staggering implications when it comes to Tom Nook's business. If your character can theoretically visit any town in any given Animal Crossing game, that would mean that all towns in Animal Crossing are canonically connected in the same world. And Tom Nook, as one of the series' mainstays, has his tendrils extending to every single one of these towns. So we're not just looking at how much money Tom Nook might make in one game, we're looking at all the games. Every copy of Animal Crossing that's ever been sold. And just like that, the Scrooge McDuck comparison seems a lot more apt. To find out just how much Nook has been fleecing us and how little he actually needs that money, we're gonna need to break this down into a few steps. First, we need to figure out how many copies of each Animal Crossing game have been sold worldwide. Now, we obviously can't find any exact numbers on this, but most games make the bulk of their sales in the first year, so any sales numbers we find that are dated after the year that the game came out, those should all be fine estimates. So what are the sales numbers? Well, Population Growing made an impressive first showing with 2.32 2 million copies sold. The series' first four range in the handheld market, Wild World, was a monster hit with 11.75 million copies. Surprisingly, City Folk on the Wii performed relatively poorly with only 3.38 million copies sold. That's Nintendo problems right there. 3 million copies is poor performance. And New Leaf proceeded to blow everyone out of the water with 12.21 million copies. That's, uh... That's a lot of games, and a lot of towns. This next step is arguably a little too generous on my part, but for our purposes today, let's assume that every copy of every game bought contained one town where one player fully upgraded their house and paid off all of their debt. At least I assume that's too generous. I've never paid off my debt. 
It's just like real life. My sad existence aside, how much does it cost you to fully upgrade your house in each Animal Crossing game? Population growing, 1,413,600 bells. Wild World, 3,559,800 bells. City Folk, 1,353,800 bells. And New Leaf, a whopping 7,595,800 bells. So if we multiply each of these numbers by how many copies each Animal Crossing game sold, we can get an idea of just how many bells the bourgeois nook can't wait to snatch from our grubby villager hands. Spoiler alert, our numbers are gonna start getting pretty massive here, so drum roll please. Population growing, 3 trillion, 279 billion, 552 million bells. Wild world, 41 trillion, 827 billion, 650 million bells. City folk, 4 trillion, 575 billion, 844 million bells. And new leaf, 92 trillion, 744 billion, 718 million bells. Which means that across the four main games, Tom Nook has profited around, let's see if I can do this by memory, 142 trillion, 427 billion, 764 million bells. Suddenly, Tom Nook offering you a paltry few million bells to buy your town in New Leaf uh, doesn't sound so far-fetched, does it? It's literally just a drop in the bucket for him, though this also kind of gives credence to the theory that Tom Nook is just a money-grubbing corrupt con man. But hang on a second, these numbers, these are just for the human players in Animal Crossing. What about all the other villagers in the game? You know, the ones that keep sending you unsolicited letters and never give you the furniture you want? Damn it, Peanut, I didn't need another rare painting, I need the scary painting to round out this stupid museum with nothing in it! Sorry, what I mean to say is, the villagers must be paying someone for their houses too, right? It's not like they move into a house after a villager moves out. Their houses, foundations, move around. So they're different houses. And while to my knowledge it isn't actually confirmed in the main games that Tom Nook also owns all their asses, I could be wrong on that, but he sure as hell does in Happy Home Designer, where you build houses for everyone under the oppressive rule of Nook. Also, in the main series of games, everyone's houses look pretty much the same as yours, and a lot of characters seem to feel apprehensive about him, so yeah, definitely the entire town's landlord. Villagers in Animal Crossing generally have smaller houses than the players, because I guess they've achieved enlightenment and take pleasure in the smaller things instead of being driven to constantly have the biggest house in town. In fact, most if not all of them live in 6x6 houses through every game in the franchise, the same as the base house plus the first expansion for us human players. So for our purposes, we'll take the maximum number of villagers possible in a town for each game and then apply the cost of a 6x6 house to each. And then, you know the drill, multiply it by the number of copies each game sold. For example, in population growing, the cost of a 6x6 house is 69,600 bells. Multiply that by the number of games sold, we get 161,472,000,000 bells. Wow how that escalated quickly. But that's just for one villager in each town. We need to multiply these numbers again by 15, since in this game, 15 is the maximum amount of villagers in town. Meaning that in the first Animal Crossing, Tom Nook theoretically would have made another 2 trillion, 422 billion, and 80 million bells off villagers alone. In the interest of saving time, let's apply the rest of these calculations lightning fast. Here's the cost of a villager's house in each game. Here's the cost of one house across all copies of the game sold. And here's the final cost for the maximum amount of villagers in each game across every game sold. Long story short, the total profits Nook has made from villagers across the four main games of the series is about 48.5 trillion bells. And this brings the grand total of Tom Nook's businesses up to, here we go again, 190 trillion, 882 billion, 990 million bells. That wasn't even close. I don't know what I said there. That's not the right number at all. Let's double check that. 190 trillion. 992 billion, 894 million. But of course, none of this matters if we don't know what bells are actually worth. A common idea across the pockets of the internet that are crazy enough to try to solve this question is that one bell has the same amount of buying power as a yen in Japan, which is around the same as a penny in America. A fair assumption, since Animal Crossing is made by a Japanese company. But let's do some digging here and find something a bit more concrete than an assumption. Now, because this is a video game with video game logic, we're never really going to be able to have a 100% correct answer that's consistent all across the board. So for us today, inconsistencies be damned, let's use fruit as a reference. In the Animal Crossing games, native fruit generally sells for 100 bells, and exotic fruit slash imported fruit sells for 500 each. That's pretty much always been the rule. Granted, there are exceptions like the island fruit going for 250 bells, but we're going to be sticking with the general calculations today and really only the domestic one. Of course, in the real world, different fruit sell for different prices, so we're going to have to generalize a bit. But don't worry, our general fruit stand-in is one that's readily available in the Animal Crossing games. 
apples. The price of a pound of apples tends to float in between just over a dollar, around 120 when they're in season, and something like two dollars otherwise. So let's average that out to about 160 for a pound of apples. A pound of apples isn't the same as one apple though. If these are medium sized apples, a pound would probably only come out to about three apples. So let's divide 160 by three, which leaves us with 53 cents or an approximation for the worth of a hundred bells, which would put the worth of one bell at 0.0053 dollars, about half a cent, considerably lower than a yen. If we use this number and then convert Tom Nook's massive pile of bells that we've accumulated through this video into US dollars, then that would bring Tom Nook's real estate empire to 1 trillion, 12 billion, 262 million, 338 thousand, 200 dollars. Okay, that's, that's a big number, but what does it mean? Well, for reference, the world's richest human being at the time I'm recording this video, at least, Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos is currently sitting pretty at a net worth of $131 billion, only a little more than a tenth of the terrifying Tanuki over here. Nook would also absolutely eclipse several of the world's richest real estate barons put together. In fact, the wealthiest in the world, China's Wang Jianlin, is worth only a measly, pathetic $22.6 billion. I'm just kidding, literally no one should ever ever have that kind of money. That's way too much money to ever spend in a lifetime. To put this further into perspective, Nook's homes, Tom Nook's real estate empire is worth the same as the entire Amazon corporation six times over, or the Walt Disney Company almost eight times over. Though who knows, give them both a couple of years, maybe they'll both be worth more than Nook's homes. Because our lives are ruled by corporations that only get bigger and more unstoppable with each passing day. Please don't fire me, whoever my parent company is. But wait, we're forgetting one very important detail from Tom Nook's personal life. If you talk to Nook inside his home in Happy Home Designer, he'll first try to dispel any rumors that he's actually a shady con man like his possible former colleague Red. But he also drops an interesting tidbit that he donates 90% of his revenue to an orphanage three towns over that has a wing named after him. But even giving away 90% of his net worth, Tom Nook would still be the second richest person in the world just ahead of Bill Gates, who also gives away a staggering amount of his fortune to charities. But, you know, better distributed than to an orphanage three towns over, whatever that's supposed to mean. Of course, this is just one possible result in trying to figure out just how rich Tom Nook is. Depending on how you want to answer this, what approach you use, what metric you use to convert bells to dollars, the doors are definitely open for different interpretations to answer this question. But no matter what result you come up with, I think we can all agree on at least one thing about Tom Nook when you really think about it. While we might all hate Tom Nook from time to time for hoarding all of our hard-earned bells, in the end, more than any other wealthy person on earth, he's not a sleazy con man or a corrupt billionaire. He's an entrepreneur and a philanthropist, always eager to use his billions of dollars to buy homes for young, stupid villagers who move into town without any sort of plan for their living situation. And while he expects you to pay him back, his loans are completely interest-free, and you can pay him back whenever you want and then you own that house forever. Tom Nook's not a villain. His method of wealth redistribution might make him the greatest hero in gaming, despite most of that wealth being distributed to him. That's a horrible message to promote anywhere else, but somehow, Animal Crossing makes it wholesome. You know how much each player's house would be worth in each game if we used the same metric that we've been using? $7,539.20. $18,985.60. $7,220.26. $40,510.93. I would gladly take any of these over stupid real world prices. You gotta respect the hustle of someone who can buy and build houses. He builds them too, let's not forget that. At those prices, while still somehow turning the biggest profit in history. At least I assume it's the biggest profit in history, but knowing my luck, there's probably some historical figure that had an amount of money that was like way more than what we just calculated. But what do you want from me? It's a video about Tom Nook. What's the name of that guy who, who did the, like the whole parade through the deserts just to show off how rich he was? Maybe that guy was richer than Tom Nook, I don't know. He really should probably start paying Timmy and Tommy, though. I don't think they get paid. There's gotta be some sort of child labor law in Animal Crossing, right? Ah, well, whatever. I know in the last couple of episodes we've given ratings to the theories that we've been talking about, but since this was more of a curiosity than a theory, what do you think? Out of five, what do you rate our conclusion that Tom Nook is actually a charitable, well-meaning Tanuki rather than a 
greedy, money-hungry villain. Let us know both that and your favorite K.K. Slider song in the comments below. That last thing has nothing to do with this video, but K.K. is my favorite character and I miss hanging out with him by the train station. We all know his best piece is Go K.K. Rider, but let us know his second best piece in the comments. Maybe check out one of the videos on this end card here. I'd tell you more about them, but I don't know what they are. I don't know what's being shown. <laughs> okay, bye.